What's up guys? Today we're gonna to check out a brand new power conditioner from AudioQuest. This is the PowerQuest 707. So shout out to AudioQuest for sending this over for me to review. Thank you guys. If you had missed my other video where I had reviewed their higher end products, the Niagara 3000 and 5000, I'll leave a link for, those, for that video down below in this video's description. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed and see what comes inside. So there's actually three versions of these. There's the 305, 505, and then this is the higher end one, which is the 707. So this is their best one in the uh, PowerQuest lineup. So inside the box, we do get some rack ears. So, if you, so this is rack mountable. Here's the manual. And there is a nice little power cord included inside the box. This does have like a flat wall design to it, so it doesn't kind of like stick straight out. So that's pretty cool. Now AudioQuest did send over an upgraded power cord in case you didn't want to use the included one. This is their monsoon cable. This is also supposed to help reduce interference and noise. Whether or not it's gonna make a difference, I guess we'll find out. But this does look definitely a lot beefier than the included power cord. It doesn't have that flat, that flat wall hugging design, but this definitely does look, definitely does look cooler than the included one. So there we go. You can see that this has a nice black finish. Not like the Niagara's, which had that silver, shiny chrome finish. So this will probably look a lot better in your home theater setup than the Niagara's would. Although I do have the Niagara in my home theater rack. But size wise, this is roughly 17 inches wide by 15 inches in depth. And it is about three and three quarters in height. All right, so let's take a look at the front. On the left side, we get some LED indicators for overload protection. We got the protection on. We get the, we get the little uh, name badge, PowerQuest 707 on the lower, lower left corner. And then the opposite corner, we have your main power switch on off. And then that's pretty much it. So it's pretty clean, Spartan look. So let's go ahead and swing this around and check out the back. Again, we're gonna start over from your left side, which has the main power inlet. We've got 12 outlets in the back. We have four high current outlets for like amplifiers or you know anything that produces power. And this will provide up to 45 amps of transient power. So there is 45 watts of reserved. So for those high peaks, explosions and stuff like that, high transients in your music, these are the ones that you would wanna hook up your amplifier to. And then we've got eight just your standard linear filter source component outputs. So this is for your stuff like your Blu-ray player, your TV, your um, you know CD player, record player, vinyl player, stuff like that. That's where these guys would go. Now this does offer non-sacrificial surge protection. So if you were to get hit by a storm, it should not only protect your gear, but also not incur any damage to itself. So you won't have to go out and buy another one. Now being a power conditioner, it does offer what AudioQuest calls ultra linear noise dissipation at more than negative 22 dB. So with all the appliances turning on and off in your home, the other dozen or so electronic devices plugged into your walls, and of course all the wireless signals floating through the air, this could all introduce noise into your power lines. Let's go test this out and see if it actually works. As you can see, I am in my kitchen right now. Obviously my music room, my two channel setup, my home theater is in a different room, but my kitchen has the worst outlets in the entire apartment. Yes, I do live in an apartment. There's people above me and also below me, so I do not have clean power in my house. Which brings me to this little device here. It's the Entec Powerline Noise Analyzer. This is capable of monitoring and measuring the radio frequency noise ranging from 300 kilohertz up to 700K. The device's speaker projects the amplified demodulated AM FM noise present on the power line. And if we go ahead, turn this thing on, it's plugged into the, um, the outlet back there. So right now we've got this on zero as we turn it up, the sensitivity on this little gadget. So 
So this is picking up a radio station. I believe it's AM. They might be talking about a, a baseball game or something like that. But this is the kind of interference that I'm getting directly from my wall into this device. So it's picking up some definite noise and interference. But let's go ahead and plug this into the PowerQuest 707 using the included power plug. I'm just going to go ahead and switch it on. All right, so the first bank of outlets we're going to check out is the high current amplifier outputs. I've got the sensitivity all the way down to the bottom. And as I turn all the way up, I mean, you can barely hear anything come out of the built-in speaker on this device. It is at a 0.7. So this is using the included power cord. So it's fluctuating between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, right? Let's move over to the second bank of outlets. All right, I got the sensitivity all the way down. And as I turn this up, you can see that this is about the same. It's at 0 0.7. And let's go ahead, move on over to the next bank of outlets. Turn the sensitivity all the way up. So this one looks like it's a little bit noisier. It's at 1.0. So that's still a lot better than what it was coming directly from the wall. So now let's go ahead and swap out the power cable and we'll see if the more expensive cable actually makes a difference or not. I mean, I've never really tested power cables before, so this is gonna be first. We're gonna check out the last bank that we just tried with the included power cable. I'm gonna turn up the sensitivity, it's at 0.2. And as you can see, this is at a 0.6. Whereas the included power cable, it was about a 1.0 if I'm not mistaken. So the monsoon cable definitely does make a difference. Let's move this on over to the other two banks. All right, we are at a 0.2. Let's turn this up. And we are at a 0.2. So I believe that the original cable was at a 0.7. This is at a 0.2. Let's move this on over to the high current outlets. Okay, we're at a 0.2. I'm going to turn up the sensitivity and we are at a 0.4 whereas on the original cable it was at a 0.7. Clearly using the PowerQuest 707 made a huge difference from what was coming out of my wall. And yes, I was skeptical, but the power cable also made a difference. It was small, but there was a definite change in noise. And if you go back to my original review of the 3000 and 5000, I got the same experience with this one. With music, especially with acoustic music with no artificial instruments, it's got a very clean, dark background where the instruments just come out of nowhere and the dynamics are clean. This of course will depend on your equipment and you know, hey, maybe you have cleaner power in your home than I do. So I'm not saying that this is gonna benefit everyone that tries it out. At the time of this video, the PowerQuest 707 is selling for $12.99. If you're a believer in snake oil, then this product is never gonna work for you. If you've got a resolving system and a good hearing, for less than half the price of the Niagara 3000, the PowerQuest 707, from what I could hear, performed just as good. Of course, I'm not gonna test out the surge protection and try to blow the thing up, but for audio purposes, the 707 is a winner. The power cord isn't bad either. So what are your thoughts on power conditioners? Do you use them? Do you believe in them? Do you think they're a waste of money? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Now, if you do want to pick up any of these products that I mentioned in this video, you can find links down below in this video's description. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.